When we opt for the database per service pattern, each microservice is responsible for its own data. But what if a business transaction depends on data that spans across multiple microservices? That is where the need for distributed database transactions arise. And in this lecture, we'll see how the Saga pattern solves that problem. But before we do that, we need to understand what a distributed database transaction is. Remember, the purpose of a database transaction is to guarantee an all or nothing outcome and comply to all four asset properties, that is, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. In simple terms, it means that if any step in the database transaction fails, everything that the database transaction affected should be rolled back. A distributed transaction can be defined as a database transaction that involves two or more network hosts, or microservices in our case, as opposed to a single system that executes a transaction directly to the database. Okay, so what is the Saga pattern? The Saga pattern was first introduced in the 1980s as a solution for solving distributed transactions in relational databases. The Saga pattern is a design pattern that provides a solution for implementing transactions in the form of Sagas that span across two or more microservices. A Saga can be defined as a sequence of local transactions, where each participating microservice executes one or more local transactions and then publish an event that is used to trigger the next transaction in a saga that resides in another participating microservice. When one of the transactions in the sequence fails, the saga executes a series of compensating transactions to undo these changes that were made by the preceding transactions. There are two types of sagas, a choreography-based saga and a orchestration-based saga. First, let's look at an example of the choreography-based saga. In a choreography-based saga approach, each microservice would publish a domain event after executing a local transaction that would trigger the next transaction in another microservice. I will use the classic e-commerce use case to explain how the choreography-based saga approach works. First, an order microservice creates an order in a pending state and publishes an order created event to the event bus. The payment microservice then listens for the order created event and attempts to process the payment for the order. If it succeeds, it publishes a payment processed event. Another microservice, the shipping microservice, would then listen for the payment processed event and attempt to ship the order. If it is successful, it will publish an order shipped event to the event bus. The order microservice that started the whole process would then listen for the order shipped event. And when it receives it, it would change the state of the order to approved, effectively committing the transaction. That is a typical distributed transaction that is facilitated by the choreography-based saga where everything went smoothly. But let's look at what happens if there is any failure. Again, an order microservice creates an order in a pending state and publishes an order created event to the event bus. The payment microservice would again listen for the order created event and attempts to process the payment for the order. Let's say that the customer has insufficient funds to make the payment. If that is the case, the payment microservice can publish an insufficient funds event that the order microservice can listen for. If the order microservice consumed the insufficient funds event, it would change the state of the order to reject it. Or well, let's say that the payment did in fact succeed. Once again, the shipping service would consume the payment processed event and attempt to ship the order. If something goes wrong, it could publish a not shipped event that could also trigger the order microservice to reject the order.
That was the choreography based saga. Now let's take a look at the orchestration based saga approach. In an orchestration based saga approach, we have a saga orchestrator that manages all the transactions and directs the participating microservices to execute their local transactions. But how does it work? An order microservice creates an order in a pending state and creates an order saga orchestrator. The order saga orchestrator then publishes a process payment command message to the event bus. The payment microservice would then listen for a process payment command message and attempt to process the payment. If it succeeds, it would publish a payment processed event to the event bus. However, this time the order saga orchestrator will consume the payment processed event message instead of the shipping microservice. The order saga orchestrator would then publish a ship order command that the shipping microservice would consume and process. If it is successful in its attempt, it would reply to the order saga orchestrator by publishing an order shipped command to the event bus. Finally, the order saga orchestrator would consume the order shipped event and update the order as approved. Again, in this scenario, everything went as planned. But what happens if there's a failure with the orchestration-based saga? The order saga orchestrator could also listen to failure type events. If the payment service publishes an insufficient funds event or the shipping microservice publishes a not shipped event, the order saga orchestrator would handle those events and update the order as rejected. It would also take the responsibility to execute a series of compensating transactions to undo all of these changes. 